Today is an awesome day. We're looking at Supra. Everything Supra. Every Supra is here for us to see. Standing with the 2000 GT. Which are a lot of signs saying do not touch. It is tiny. I don't think I could actually fit in that. Next up being the A40, A60, A70. As you can see, we're going up numbers. And obviously the A80 Supra. Which is the one that I think the majority of people watching this video will recognize, love. But today isn't about the old, it's about the new, the upcoming, the Supra is here, it's back again. And as I'd luck would have it, there's one now. of a track driver so my laps weren't groundbreaking anyway so there's no point in documenting I was getting a feel for the car so honestly overall the feel of the car is actually pretty great I've got somewhat of an idea of how it but it got through this straight is pretty quick it's pretty quick indeed obviously it's in kilometers so it's hard for me to properly judge how quick it is but I tell you it is fast I think just having the inline six turbo back again in 2020 a lot of european markets are going to make it so that when it comes to these type of cars we're going to have to have a hybrid element in them they're definitely road cars because they're super quiet but you can hear the turbo scream as you go through but behind me is the toyota supra it looks incredible now the one thing they actually wanted to, to make clear about this is obviously the power and everything it's not finalized looking at 300 horsepower which is i think plenty enough for an inline six turbo engine twin scroll so it's kind of back to the classics as i was mentioning before the wheelbase of the super is actually smaller than that of the gta6 which is actually cool little fact if you wanted to know some more little details about it. one of the coolest features i think is this section here which kind of reminds me of like race style cars. The back, overall the car really reminds me of kind of racing performance cars and that's what they're trying to get at here. Now obviously we all want to see what the car looks like without the wrap pretty much covering up the whole curves and stuff of the car but unfortunately we've got to wait a little bit longer for that. From the factory there should be an option to have this as paint because I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't get it personally because I don't want to show off the lines and stuff but usually these are kind of very hidden and trying not to show you as much detail but Toyota's kind of gone the opposite and done the opposite and made it so that this is the car you see and you want to focus your eyes and try and pick out every little detail of it. Every single angle actually looks really, really good. That's a common thing I have with cars. Like, I usually like one part of it more than the other. But overall, all around this car, it looks magnificent. Although, it's difficult to tell right now because obviously there's the big kind of livery over the top of it. But, but although it does have the short wheelbase as we spoke about, it is actually pretty wide. So that means that obviously it's got a lot more traction. I'm really digging the light design, the front bumper design. Obviously a lot of this has come from the concept that they made a while ago, the FT1 concept that was in Gran Turismo. And obviously with the road car, they can't do as wide a car and they can't do a bunch of all of these little bits as well. But overall the design looks amazing. And I've only just kept, I, I noticed that there's something kind of like peeling off in the back with the wrap, but it's actually the super badge under the wrap. They've wrapped over the badge as opposed to taking them off and putting them back on again, which I kind of would have liked them to see the badges. But that's a nice big super badge for your Supra. You buy a Supra, you get a Supra badge. Now interior wise, we've actually got placeholder stuff in here. So that's being worked on right now. There's something I didn't realize about the Supra. It's unlocked. So the thing I want to point out is obviously all the instrumentals point to the driver, that's the main focus of the Supra, like everything is driver focused. With this new car, they're doing the exact same. It's cool that they're kind of keeping that like focus on it because it's something that may have been minimalistic to some people, but the driver focus for the most part is a sports car. The driver needs to be the focus. This is also actually the first time I've seen the interior of a Supra like this close. And I quite like it. Another body line that I'm obsessed with. I would say the arch comes out more than the, the rest of the car, but it doesn't. It's almost as if the roof is smaller than that of the arches and it just kind of carries that really cool line. We've got this which is a nice little vent here but unfortunately it's not actually a vent but I imagine the air does channel up it so it has some practicality. It's not just there for the sake of it but I think I imagine on say a race car that would actually be used. Drifting is hard work. <laughs> <laughs> I got that on camera. You're about to go drifting. Right. Here he goes. It's been nice knowing y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck! We'll be watching your every move. <laughs> Here we go guys, let's see how he does. He's going for a drift lap in the Supra. Well, actually, I don't, I don't think he's driving yet. 
but we'll figure it out. How are you feeling? I am quite good. Good, yeah. good, fantastic. I think Theo's doing really well now. Yeah, and now he's <laughs> stopped. What does that mean? What's gonna happen? Oh, uh oh. That is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. He's got a big smile on his face. <laughs> big smile on your face there. <laughs> and now the GT86. Enjoy! Actually, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I look pretty cool. I think it's your turn now. Oh god. <laughs> so I can't do that. <laughs> you can, can do whatever try. you want. The traction control off and uh it's weird driving manual on this. Side. Oh that's right. <laughs> okay. Well if anything you can just leave it in, in that gear and yeah. uh, and that's it. Okay. Alright, you ready? Yeah. Alright, let's go. Alright, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Not not a huge drift so far. <laughs> Where's the smoke? Yeah. Where's the smoke? Ah, here it comes. Here it comes. Yeah, catching it is the ah, hardest. Ah yes, so hard. Yeah. That was so cool. Fast learner that was here. really good. <laughs> Congrats. That was awesome. That was impressive. I can tell he's uh, used to teaching himself. He's picking up real quick. Oh, really? I'll oh, there you go. This is in no time. <laughs> uh oh. Awesome, brother. That was great. Thank you so much. Thank and good you. luck in the drifting career. Thank you. Very yeah. much. Thank you. Here's your camera. Thank it's you very filming. much. <laughs> I think it's a really, really great looking car. And as I've mentioned before, obviously. A lot of people, as soon as I posted pictures on it, and every time someone mentions the Supra, they're wondering, what, why? Why do we need the Supra? The last one is the best one. You can't beat the last Supra. All this kind of stuff. But I've got to say, I'm grateful for the fact that they've actually made one of these because it, it just screams, tune me. It screams, I'm a platform, play with me. And we already know, even though it, if it has a BMW engine, BMW engine, definitely tunable. And obviously I'm gonna imagine more so now that it's in a Supra. But what's gonna be interesting to me is if you think about it, obviously this is a pretty similar platform. The platform itself is the BMW Z4. So when it comes to people putting a million horsepower out of these, and actually are we gonna get some old boys tuning their Z4s to have the same? But I have to say it's a serious competitor for my future collection. My collection that will eventually one day be a thing, but it isn't if you didn't know what I'm talking about. The similarities between this and the RCF is, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of them. You can have your favorite. For example, the R34 GTR is my favorite of the GTRs, but a lot of people like the R35. And I know for a fact that people are gonna come alike to this as well. They're gonna like the Supra. They're gonna attach to this Supra. And that's what I hope the most out of this car. Sure, I hope we get the tuning, but I hope that this is gonna be in movies, this is gonna be on TV, and this is gonna be on YouTube, which wasn't a thing when I was growing up, and people are gonna love this car because they see it as they grow up, just like we did the last generation Supra. And this is a, a huge one because, as I said, this is a pretty much a goodbye 
to this type of car. So that's what I'm hoping for the Super. The Super has a lot to play up to. Hopefully it does even a little bit close to what the last Super did. Let me know your thoughts of this car down below in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you to Toyota for inviting me out to this event. It's been so much fun driving the car. I really now want to drive this on the road and see how it is as a daily driver. So Toyota, if you want to hook me up with one of these for a while, I'm your guy. I promise I won't put anything on it. Unless I buy one, then I'm gonna put everything on it. But be sure to smash like, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next video. Unfortunately, not in the Toyota Supra. <laughs> Until next time, peace.